Hi, this presentation is a demonstration of how to use the new version of Sergo Portal Beta that now includes the Soil Data Viewer component and creates a rasterized version of the Sergo Polygons. I'm going to cover how to download data with the Sergo GIS Downloader tool in ArcGIS Pro, and then I'm going to show how to use a new application to build a database and then run Soil Data Viewer to create a rating table and then ultimately make a map in ArcGIS Pro. If you're a QGIS user, many of the same processes should still work, and there's also a downloader tool for QGIS. This presentation assumes you've installed the Sergo Portal Beta demo version and the GIS tools. Guidance for installing Sergo Portal and the tools is available on the Sergo Portal webpage, or you can contact myself or Soils Hotline for more guidance. Here, I'm showing you the GIS downloader tool called Sergo the bulk downloader. I have the tool open and I'm searching for all soil survey areas in the state of Delaware by putting in DE asterisk. If I wanted all soil survey areas in the state of Oregon, I would put in OR asterisk. You get the idea. After you put in that, you'll see the list of all the soil survey areas for the state. You can choose them all or just individual ones. You add them here and then it's going to create a final list where you can hit run to begin downloading the data. I already downloaded the data, so we don't have to wait, but it, this would only take about 30 seconds to a minute to download. It's multi-threading. It downloads very fast. It also downloads the same exact data as you download from WebSoil Survey. So you can, in addition, go to WebSoil Survey and download data from there like you always have if you prefer to use that instead of the downloader tool. Here I've downloaded the data. I'll just show it to you. Here they all are. So now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to open up the new version of Circle Portal Beta. Again, I assume that you have already installed this, which is fairly simple. If you haven't, please uh, go through the installation process. I hope you didn't have any issues with Python during installation. If you did, I apologize. We are trying to clean that up with a new method of delivering the application. Here, when you open up the this version, the special version of Sergo Portal Beta, it is a demo version. So you're going to get this message every time. You can read it. I do encourage you to read it. It's telling you about how to make sure you get newer versions. But go ahead and click Acknowledge. So we're going to keep bugging you with that each time you open this. But even though it's demo version, it does work. So here, if you're using this, the first step after you open it is to create an empty database that we're going to then put that Delaware Sergo data into it or any Sergo data. I'm simply going to come here and I'm going to browse to a location that I already created on my C drive. And I'm going to choose databases. I'm going to hit create a new database and I'm going to call it Delaware. I hit save database and it created a database. In fact, I'll just show that to you very quickly. Here's the database. Now I'm going to browse the point to that Delaware data. So here I can browse directories. I happen to actually be pointing to my Sergo download folder and I'm at the correct location here. It's grayed out. I can't go any further and I hit select current folder. Some checks are run on the data. It passes. I simply click this and hit import Sergo data. And what it's going to do now is load these three files or three Sergo data sets here. I'll bring this up simultaneously. So it's loading this one, and then this one, and then this one into the database. It's loading all the spatial data and the tabular data. Just kind of peeking under the hood here, you'll see in DE001 there's a spatial folder and a tabular folder. Now it's loaded all of them in 25 seconds. You see that I'm done with it, but now it's actually generating a rasterized version, two of those polygons. Sergo data, spatial data, the soil map comes down to you in the Sergo download as a polygon layer. So we're in addition to giving you that vectorized polygon layer, you're also getting a rasterized version of it as well. And here that should be done. I know it's done when the clock stops ticking. This is a glitch in this version of Sergo portal. So the only way you know it's done is when the clock stops ticking. We don't have any messaging here. We will clean that up in the future, but I know it's done here. I hit next. So before I go any further in Circle Portal, I'm going to go ahead and show this in ArcGIS Pro and show you the database I just made. So I'm going to browse to it here. I do have to hit refresh to make sure my directory is up to date. And in here is my database I just loaded. There is the rasterized version of the, polygon, of the uh, polygons. In fact, I'm going to symbolize this very quickly to show you the unique uh, map units. There they all are, very bright. 
And then I'm going to bring in the polygon version of them, the vector version. Same data, just a vector version. And I'll just go ahead and overlay them and zoom in. And you can see how the polygons, the black lines represent the vector and the colors are the raster. Same data set, just two different formats. However, if you do zoom in close, you will see a stair stepping between the grid, the 10 meter grid, the TIFF file, and the lines. There's a little loss in data accuracy, but nothing that would concern me and stop me from using the raster layer. I think it's a very good product, particularly if you're working with very large databases, much larger than the state of Delaware. Okay, back over to the Circle Portal application. You see I made the database here. I have all the spatial data and also all the tabular data and all these other files here, all the soil properties interpretations. So back over to Circle Portal, which was right here. So I've made that database, I loaded the data. Here I'm on this tab now called Sergo Data in Database. This is just showing me what's in the database, what soil survey areas. I could actually delete one of those if I wanted to. It's kind of an edge case, most people won't want to do it, but you could delete the data. What I really want to do is analyze the data. I want to aggregate information from those soil properties, interpretations to the map unit level and make pretty thematic maps. So what Soil Data Viewer here, this new fancy component we added to Circle Portal will do is run an aggregation engine, a bunch of complex code behind the scenes that will drill down into all these child tables and then create a new table and stick it in your database that you can then join to the spatial data in ArcGIS and make a map. We will improve all these processes in the future, so there is some manual work right now, but it does work. So let's say I want a soil organic matter map. I can come here to to this folder, Soil Physical Properties, go to Organic Matter, come in here and choose some options. Let's say I only want the organic matter content for the upper 50 centimeters, and I want the weighted average of every map unit. I go ahead and choose that. I hit Generate Rating, and very quickly, less than a second, I'm done. There's, It's over. It's run. And this little message here gives you some guidance on what to do with the table that was added to your database. That's the name of the table. It tells you you can join it to the polygons and the rasters which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to ArcGIS Pro. And I'm going to refresh again because I added, made a change to the database. So ArcGIS Pro needs a refresh. And then I'm going to see that rating table appear right down here. And there it is. There's my organic matter. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my table of contents. I can open it just to show you very quickly that I have organic matter ratings in the 0 to 50 centimeter range. It looks like I chose inches. I didn't realize that you can choose inches or centimeters. So I was moving too fast. But here I chose inches, zero to 50 inches. And I can now join that to the polygon or the raster layer. So I'm going to zoom to one of these so you can see the entire state. And I'm going to join to the polygon layer first. I'm going to right click on the polygon layer. I'm going to hit add join. And I'm going to connect my rating table here to the polygon layer. And I'm going to do it on MU key. That's the the linking column between the two. So they both have MU key in there. And that's how I connect them together. And I'm done with the join. If I open, I'm going to close this one here for the rating table. And I'm going to open the polygon attribute table. And we'll see there's my organic matter values in there. And now I can make a map. So I'm going to go to symbology and we'll do some graduated colors. And we'll choose 10 classes. And I'll kind of let it do it for me here. And when I turn it on, I believe I should have a nice color-coded map here. Whoops, I chose the wrong field. I'm sorry. I need to switch this field to the organic matter. There's my organic matter map. So now I can see the organic matter content in the upper 50 inches in the state of Delaware. These are class breaks here. So you could add as many as you want. Again, I could switch this to you know, 16 class breaks, get a more detailed map. And lastly, I'll just show you that I can do the same thing for that raster data. The raster is the same information. It's just a gridded format, which is helpful when working over large geographic areas to have it in a raster format and also can be helpful for modeling purposes. So here in the raster, I'm going to add a join just like I did with the vector. I'm going to join on MU key. Oops, I think I already got it. There you go. And now I'm going to symbolize the raster. And I don't want unique values. We're going to classify it and we're going to change it to the organic matter. And we'll choose a bunch of classes for this too. And turn it on. And there's the organic matter raster map. 
same data as the vector. You can choose what you want to do with it. Thanks for watching the demo.